CBS 2's Cesar Rodriguez has been sorting out the timeline of this extensive pursuit. Several suspects are behind bars now, and this all ended when one of the drivers made a left here on 142nd and Edbrook. Take a look right behind me. He hit this sign, then the tree trunk. Cesar Rodriguez met up with a group of teens trying to protect immigrants. He is live in Pilsen tonight. Cesar. Erica, the president's two weeks grace notice on immigration raids ends tomorrow. That's why communities like Pilsen have been mobilizing for several weeks now. They've been posting these signs right here that state this acronym, Immigration Customs Enforcement Free Zone, and residents know their legal rights because they want to make sure that this community welcomes immigrants. So we're located near the corner of Martin Luther King Avenue and May Street, just a few steps away from us. This entire area has been cordoned off. Take a look police presence still active. I'm going to go to the side here. I'm going to ask my colleague Jeff if you give us a live look of what we're seeing. Several police vehicles, also residents and family members. One local man is lacing up his boots to start a new chapter in his life, and it was as simple as calling the Chicago Police Department for help. The parking lot of the strip mall, as well as a parking lot of this residential complex right behind me is nothing compared to what some residents saw just a few hours ago. If you walk down Wrightwood Lane tonight, you're going to notice that a lot of the trees have been uprooted, a lot of them toppled. Also, a lot of the branches fell like tr from trees similar to this one. Take a look. This branch, we're not talking about light branches. We're talking about very heavy branches that possibly weigh more than about 50 pounds and easily could have killed someone tonight. All five suspects were arrested. We reached out to the local PD, but we're still waiting for answers. We're live in Riverdale. Cesar Rodriguez, CBS 2 News. Fuerza Juventud will continue posting these signs across the neighborhood tomorrow, and on Sunday, they'll organize a Know Your Rights event. We're live in Pilsen. Cesar Rodriguez, CBS 2 News. Erica, back uh, to you. All right, Cesar, thank you. To know that when my sister finally gets into high school, when she graduates eighth grade, he's not going to be there. And that's what was taken away from me that day, a family. 21-year-old Damaris Posadas is emotional as she describes how ICE agents burst through her parents' home four years ago and arrested her and deported her father for being in the country illegally, an experience that has haunted her for years. And during that time, I had known some of my rights, obviously not all of them, but some of them, and I had asked for a warrant. I said, show me your warrant. Where is your warrant? At that point, the ICE officer proceeded to take his gun out and put it against my head. It was this experience that motivated this incoming Boston University graduate student, an immigrant, to join a local teen group called La Fuerza Juventud, Right to Family Canvas. Fuerza en Juventud is Spanish for strength and youth. These volunteers hit the pavement today and faced high temperatures to educate residents about their rights and distribute flyers. They believe ICE agents will conduct massive undocumented removal operations that President Donald Trump said will happen this weekend. We're just letting people know, do not open the door. Damati's parents brought her to this country when she was three years old. Her father died in Mexico trying to cross back illegally. She says the broken immigration system keeps many in the shadows. Any family within the United States right now that is here legally and has been here for 20 years can apply for citizenship. We can't apply as normal citizens. And that's what the hard part is. For those people who say you need to go back to your country, you broke the law, what do you tell them? Seeking asylum is not a legal entry. Two, that although we broke a law, we are not trying to cause anything bad to happen in this country. His spirit's just broken. And uh, he didn't deserve this. Courtney and Ron Gatowski were out of town this week. They arrived this morning and found their one-year-old dog, Echo, in a battered state. He wasn't himself. When I held him, he was very jumpy and he's trembling. Wendy Miller's a family friend and was house-sitting. On Wednesday morning, she let Echo out in the yard and moments later, she heard him bark. She went outside and saw the neighbor hitting the dog. The guy was leaning halfway over the fence and beating Echo with this stick on the head. And then when I yelled at him, um, I seen him hit Echo twice on the head. I'm not sure how many times before that. She rushed him to the veterinarian. His eye socket was shattered and his right eye had to be removed. I was scared. I didn't know if he's going to live or die. This isn't the first time the dog was attacked. Back in March, the family says that the neighbor threw chunks of ice at Echo. Fortunately, he wasn't injured. And it all could have been prevented 
had the police taken me seriously back in March, the first time he was attacked. We try to find out from police whether the neighbor has been questioned, but we're told no one can talk to us until next week. We've also tried to find the neighbor to hear his side of the story, but no luck. This was barbaric and I hope he's ashamed of himself. In South Haven, Cesar Rodriguez, CBS 2 News. This is how Barbara Tate describes what her family's going through after her younger brother, Charles Frazier, went missing. She says he suffers from dementia. You want to keep your family together. You want to try not to uh, place in facilities. Family tells us a 70-year-old man went missing on Tuesday at around 7 in the evening from the villa at Windsor Park Nursing and Rehab Center. However, the staff informed them of his disappearance hours later at 1 o'clock Wednesday morning. The director of nursing here says, um, well, we don't know what happened. Uh, he, he left out. It didn't alarm. We don't know why. They allege Mr. Frazier was wearing an ankle bracelet that alerts staff if patients leave the facility. And you say that you were informed that he dropped or he, he took his, his, the sensor off his ankle? She's claiming that he the removed, director. the director claimed that he removed the ankle bracelet that was on, but it's nowhere to be found. I want the people that's responsible held accountable as well, because it's, it's definitely gross negligence. Villa at Windsor Park has an overall above average rating and four out of five stars from Medicare, yet they received two out of five stars for staffing. They did a pretty good job. It's just that I guess they dropped the ball on him. But they need to streamline their process. Yeah. Is there anyone in person that can speak to us rather than... We wanted answers about what happened, but we were told to email the media relations department, which we did.